All right, first off, a shout out to uh, Charles Latour. I've never used um, a coffee maker before. And, well, like for at home kind of thing. And um, I saw one of Charles Latour's videos. He was given a pat on the back kind of thing. There's, I guess, one of his best friends forever is, is coffee maker. So I, and lucky for me, I, I just mentioned it to people and uh, ended up getting one free. So that's awesome. And I've never been able to do this uh, this time. Normally, I just um, uh, pick two of the three, like one scoop of each kind of thing. And now, because um, I can go mental with this thing, I can use both. So that was kind of neat. I just went with uh, two traditional and then one mountain and one of the um, blonde silk. So I thought that was kind of neat. Hold on. Yeah, and this is uh, one of my t-shirts I've been wearing for ages. Like you can even see this probably food grease or something like that from my fingers. And you can see this has been, I've worn this a ton of times now. It's been washed a ton of times. And this is the cheap, uh, the cheap um, or the cheaper black and white only um, transfer iron on. So I'm going to try the more, uh, the colorful one because it seems to be more resilient. It's the one that I use with... Uh, Hold on, I don't know if you can see. There, that dude. So that one is done with the proper nice colored one. And this has gone through a heck of a lot more washes and it's way more resilient. So, um, yeah, like I said, I know that uh, I promised a few people I was going to send out t-shirts, but I want to play test things before I send them out. Uh, there's only one I've sent out to Math, Fun and Games and... Um, uh, and then I was like, oh no, I could see this. I had already sent him an email mentioning that, uh, just be warned, uh, don't go for, you know, whatever. So that's one thing. So at least now I know what to use and uh, I can start making them properly. Also, I mean, let's be honest, on a side note, it's not just because I was play testing my, my time management skills suck. So maybe somebody would have got a crappy t-shirt if, um, um, you know, I'm still pretty happy and it's got an interesting little modeled look. So I'm, you know, I'm going, I'm, I'm still wearing it. You can t I'll tell you that much. Hold on. And I think I may have found another use for my, um, uh, those little wood blocks that I love to color and started using it the very first time when I was doing the mini game. So this is at a dollar store. They're a dollar fifty. So it's probably not very, like it, I couldn't make a proper, uh, like a bazillion A's and so on and so forth to, to do or whatever. It would have to be really slow. But, uh, I'm, you know, I'd like to try to make some old, uh, my own stamp blocks and, and so on and so forth and go from there. Um, that's just something to think about. Um, and plus, I, I really want to get my crafting vibe going on again. It's uh, it's been it's been a while. It's just been too, but too long, to be honest with you. All right, so back to the mini game, which has kind of been neat. I'm starting to clue in now that I'm uh, as I'm adding in uh, more of the grand campaign stuff. Um, there's like two different love. Oh my god, this game is just a flipping amazing time for me. I mean, not just the narrative bit, but then I, I get down to here and this is my operational level. Like I'm thinking uh, just towards the uh, the Russian stuff. And oh, uh, and that's uh, why I'm staring at the map. I've got the camera on the map here is the fact that um, I figured out what I'm going to do with the people's militia. So basically, nice and simple. Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically the people's militia in my world are kind of like the Russians equivalent to perhaps like the Landstrom in a sense. But anyways, what I'm going to do is uh, the uh, the people's militia, and I'm going to go and have to learn how to pronounce the proper Russian word for it, um, is that um, they're only going to be, uh, their strength points are only going to be allowed to be used for counterattacking. So I can't use them for attacks. That's as simple as that. Just put a little asterisk beside their thing in my, in my record book. It makes total sense to me. Nice and flippin' easy. And uh, it just clues in with the the whole thing on the yeah so that's oh gosh you know is this one okay this is really something that's i i just feel like an opportunity just slipping away for the russians and i have to figure out some i just don't know if i can uh, i just want to be able to figure out a way of isolating the, the the austrian third army here and it's right there tantalizing but the problem is is the flipping austrians man i've been pumping up like Look, you can see, I don't know if you can notice here. They've got two German troops uh, uh, embedded in with their Austrians along the right flank there to, to bolster their uh, 
uh, re retreat um, defense kind of thing. And the two core HQs over here is pretty much telling me that they're ready to uh, start at least, um, you know, getting recombining stuff or just they're getting, they want some troops put in there. I have to figure out something to do with that. I just don't know. And then, like I said, I've got this going on in, on an operational note. So here I am thinking about uh, Russia. And then I've got this, which is just flipping awesome. All right. It's probably somewhat dark because it's early in the morning. It's like the sun isn't up yet. But uh, so on a strategic note, here I am um, being the central powers on this side. And I'm trying to figure out some way. Gosh, man, every time it's like a counter... I'm like, oh, I, I think I've got a good idea uh, coming up with, for the central powers. I'm like, nope, it gets countered by something I figure uh, I find out. Like, I was like, okay, screw this. Oh, yeah, we're going to do unrestricted submarine warfare, but I'm not doing it out in the Atlantic. I'm going to do it in the Mediterranean. I'm going to try to make sure that uh, no uh, African troops and whatnot uh, go towards to help out in the Western, in the Western Front. I want to make sure that um, the Suez Canal is um, taken, that whole nine yards. And then uh, I was like, okay, let's go, go, go. And then I started reading up on the naval warfare aspect. And I find out that one of the, the two big spots for the British fleet was in the flipping Mediterranean. I'm like, ah, oh, but I'm going to try to figure out. And then I was like, okay, you start moving um, your part of your Navy, you know, away from there. Well, then that gives the British an opportunity to do that. And I'm starting to find out about the fact that possibly one of the reasons why, um, that's, well, they were you know, obviously scared of losing their Navy, uh, their fleet, but uh, it also did pin a lot of the, when they didn't leave port, it did pin a, a good, you know, a significant chunk. The British couldn't just like leave, uh, I guess, Scapa flow that area around there. Like this is all new, new stuff for me, but um I real I'm still going to try to figure out a way. I want to hammer home so badly. I want Suez Canal like you have no tomorrow. Uh, and uh, hold on, let's go to the Durval Creek map. Yeah, and let's be honest. I'm getting to the point now. Like even when I start looking at the the naval aspects, and that's okay. Like I've mentioned before, it's not the end all be all. But uh, like I mean, obviously you can see here, I want to get way more into doing some a a naval action in the Mediterranean. Not saying like ship on ship type of stuff, but I want a little bit more detail or a little bit more. I got to figure out some more stuff. But uh, the Dervel Creek map is not going to be able to do none of the map. I don't think are going to be able to do to the level I want. I mean, there's whole chunks of North Africa missing and so on and so forth. So I'm going to have to figure that out. And oh, I've been reading up on the Dervel Creek rules in Osman Lee Harbi, which has just been flipping awesome. Finding out about how to extend the rail lines, uh, the railhead and uh, getting into that. So I'm like trying to plan ahead. Okay, we've got to start getting this way. And then I also have to start trying to figure out a way of uh, connecting up the rail line. Uh, let's see if I can go over from here, like from Mesopotamia up towards, uh, you know, the Caucasus and, and uh, that region. So that way um, you, you don't get into, I, I don't want to get into trouble moving too many troops over one end of the other and the other. It's, uh, it's just so much stuff to find out, but it's just, yeah, it's lovely for crying out loud, obviously. Um, so that's it, I think. Um, yeah, I'm trying to like reconstitute everything for um, live stream later. And it's been, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, hope you have a good Friday. See ya.